I came up by train. I played in a golf tournament at Moor Park in my first tournament. And then I arrive up here, now I'm going to the Great St. Andrews. I don't know where I am. I get off this train at this station, Lucas it's called, and I'm right here and I get off the train. I don't know. Look at this. All you just see is open spaces and farms. And I thought this train was right at St. Andrews. That's what my impression was, being so naive. Anyway, I'm standing in the car park, a little old golf bag that I could carry around myself, a, a wee tiny suitcase, Two pairs of pants, two shirts, a black knitted tie that I wore at night, and during the day I use it as a belt. And now if you look at this belt I'm wearing, it's a beautiful alligator skin belt. <laughs> what a change. Anyway, I'm standing in the car park and I'm utterly lost. And a man called John Jacobs, a professional golfer who I later befriended, and a man called Lewis stopped and said, are you here for the open? I said, yes. They said, well, jump in, we'll give you a lift to the course. I was always very confident because I struggled like a junkyard dog as a, a dog as a young man. I lived under great adversity, which is a great blessing, by the way. To have adversity bestowed upon you is a blessing. And I vividly remember I had 200 pounds in my pocket, which my father had to get an overdraft for, and the help of my members at Kalani, an all Jewish club in Johannesburg, gave me an air ticket, 125 pounds to fly over here. I've got in my suitcase hardly any clothes, two pairs of pants, two shirts, two pairs of underpants, which I washed every day. There was no such thing as sending it to the laundry or getting a porter to help you. I had to do everything myself, carry my bag and my golf clubs, which was the greatest thing for me really to struggle like that because then the word that takes over, which is an essential ingredient, is gratitude. And I stand here today and I say a prayer of thanks every day of my life to see what has actually happened in my life. It's like a miracle, uh, which I'm so thankful for. Uh, so I sat there last night looking at this and sitting in the suite and looking over, they got the stands now for the 150th Open. Can you believe that? 150 years, older than any other major. And I'm looking at this and actually the tears came down my cheek. Here I'm in a suite and there I was in a hotel, 10 shillings a night. And when in fact, I couldn't get a room when I first went there and I went to put my waterproofs on and I slept in the sand dune where they did chariots of fire just that night because every room was so expensive. I think in those days it was round about, if I reminisce and my memory is good, 80 pounds a night. Well, there goes my total budget. And then I came back and it wasn't a bad night at all. It was very cool and nice. And I went to um, a hotel, 10 shillings a night. The room was so small that when you put the key in the keyhole, the damn window broke. So uh, as they say, the, the room was so small, the mice were hunchbacked. So anyway, I stayed there. They told me it was facing the sea. It was a W C, And I stayed there and had a very nice stay. The room was light at 11 o'clock at night, which a lot of people don't understand in other parts of the world. So I went and bought a sheet. It was a dark brown sheet and I pegged it up with these clippers so that the room would be dark for me. And uh, got off the next day and practiced, and then I got on the first tee, 1955. And so anyway, you picked up your tee, and if anybody else's tee was there, you picked it up as well. So I'm walking away, and the guy says, come here a minute, Luddy. Where are you from? I said, I'm from South Africa, sir. And he said, well, what would your name be? I said, no, my name's Gary Player. And he says, what's your handicap? I said, no, I'm a pro. He says, you're a pro. I said, yes. He says, you must be a hell of a chipper and putter because you can't hit the ball very well, lad. So now, would you believe it? I come back here four years later and I had the youngest man to have ever won the Open Championship. And he sees me and he goes like this. It's a, mira a mirage. He says, it's not possible. You couldn't, you won the Open. He says, it's a bloody miracle. And I said, yeah, you see, you've got to be very careful at being judgmental. Come on side, I'll buy you a wee drum and a nice Doch and Doris. And we'll have a wee chat. And uh, we had a lovely talk and, uh, together. I went out and started to play well immediately, not knowing exactly the intricacies of golf and the right theory. And it's taken, uh, you know, 72 years to find out the right way to play. And even today I'm finding out things. And um, so I was always confident of doing well, but how well? I didn't know I'd be the only man in the world 
to win the Grand Slam on both tours in 165 tournaments. No, could I vision that? No. But I was always confident in doing well. People cheering and you're walking up there and you're taking your hat off and you're waving. And to think that I've got my name on this trophy three times, in three different decades, the only person to do it. What an honor.